Hi, we're here today. Today is May 8th, 2023. It's 4 p.m. And we're here for the Public Works and Finance Committee meeting. And with me today is Drew Davis and Gina Terusio. Oh, as well as Bill Belnoff. <laughs> and then we're going to have Sarah up here. There's a bunch of people out in the audience we're going to hear from today, too. So um, first off, let's go do the uh, approval of the Public Works Finance Committee um, minutes. Oh, good to me. Good. Okay, consent agenda. Let's go. Disbursement, and we have our Sarah Banks. Yep. All right, so looking at our accounts payable report for month ending April 30, 2023, our total expenditures was $3,144,531.55. Our largest expenditure as usual is payroll, $1,192,104. I have a few expenditures to point out. The first one is we made a payment for, it's a chassis progress payment for our new Pierce Sabre pumper, which is our new yep. fire engine, yep. in the amount of 315130 We purchased a, it's Huber, or Herber, Herber screen parts for, it's a screen rebuild out at the wharf. It's okay. in regards to big equipment out there. Um, so a screen rebuild and the purchase was 117053 We made our fifth payment towards the Booster Station Phase 2 and the 6th Street Bridge over Paradise Creek Street Improvements payment for $183,603.16. Um, I did want to point out on the revenue report, I'm not sure if it's something you guys noticed, but in general fund and intergovernmental, there is a negative two million twenty seven three thirty eight twenty. That's actually not a true negative balance. That was um, transfers that were made. We were moving the ARPA funds from general fund into water. Good. And so it's decreasing the revenue, which makes it look like a negative. And there was also payments that came in. So the offset of that 2.7, almost 2.8 million is the 2.027. So I just wanted to point that Thank out. Thank you for pointing yeah. that out to everyone. Yep. Other than that, I don't have anything else. Any questions for her? I don't have any. Consent agenda. All right. Great. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, Sarah. Okay. Now we're into, up here for Amanda Argana. Uh, Argona. Thanks, Sarah. Good afternoon. Um, so before you in your packet is the um, approved event and draft resolution um, for Camp Moscowana, which is held by the Moscow Chamber of Commerce and Visitor Center. Um, this year's event is going to be held on Saturday, June 10th from 4 to 8. So uh, Camp Moscowana is camp themed. Um, so s'more stations, photo booth, yarn art, um, a fishing hole, not with real fish. Um, is that like a little <clears throat> pool with fake fish in it? And little yes. Little for kids? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. like those little mm -hmm. pools. Thing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, cornhole, and then, of course, up to 10 local food vendors and up to 10 uh, beer and wine vendors. So this event um, has been reviewed uh, and approved by staff as of um, almost a month ago, April 13th. So following standard, <clears throat> excuse me, operating procedures, there is a draft resolution okay. um, shown before you. I'm happy to speak on the event process. Um, and we did invite the applicant to be here uh, this afternoon, but it doesn't look like they are present in the audience. No. Um, but I can answer any questions. Um, they are still working on finalizing where the vendor locations are, but for the purposes of the resolution, we just need the actual boundaries of the event. And then they have up to 10 days prior to their event to get a finalized map um, to work with uh, the city clerk's office to make sure all their alcohol vendors are permitted. But we do know that we do need those locations of the alcohol vendors, so we'll have another finalized um, map forthcoming. Okay, good. Where yeah. the, so it's going to just somewhere between third and six, though, right? Um, right. So in your packet is the actual event footprint. That is where all the vendors will be as far as exact locations for the vendors. That is still, still forthcoming. Mm -hmm. Is it? I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I don't mean to jump in, oh, um, Chair. Do, do you have any say over where they're located, or is that the other side of the application? Um, so where locations are for the vendors is determined by the event applicant. Excellent. Okay. Um, I do know that their event um, uh, check-in area, which is required per resolution, will likely be under the U.S. Bank um, 
old U.S. Bank mm-hmm. awning yeah. again. It seems like that's where they've been having it. And um, uh, Sam Martinet did uh, confirm that's where their event check-in will be again. And how well attended is this in the past? Don't know. Not my event. <laughs> so I I don't have numbers to present to you. I, I know that uh, Sam has been working with the University of Idaho Extension to run some um, customer accounts um, um, to do some economic impact assessments. So Sam could speak to that better than me. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? I don't have any. Questions? Um, can we approve this resolution by consensus? <clears throat> yes. Did we just approve it? Well, did I ask oh. you, do, you, do you approve it? Yeah, consent? yeah, I consent? think that's consent. I like the dream. It looked like it was all there. Yes. Yeah, good. That's, Great. that's awesome. Thank you. Okay, we're now up here on Cody Riddle, and he's going to talk about the ordinance amending Moscow City Code, Title IV. Uh, thank you. I would like to say I have some pretty picture, pretty pictures to share, but this is, I mean, in terms of a presentation, pretty boring. It's a lot of, <laughs> a lot of text, actually. Oh, um, then there aren't pretty pictures. There are. I, there's not a single picture. I know. But <laughs> next time, <laughs> next next time, time I'll yeah. think of something. At least put a picture up there of me or something. <laughs> so this, this, this before you is an amendment uh, to clarify procedural requirements associated with appeals. Um, we actually we wanted to seek your your input before we uh, proceed to the Planning and Zoning Commission for the required um, hearing. I know I'm I'm presenting uh, the amendment today, but Mia, Amber, Bill, and I we there was actually quite a bit of back and forth, and what uh, culminated in a very colorful markup strikeout amendment that then draft uh, amendment you have in your packet. Um, the the uh, amendment includes appeals of both the zoning administrator or staff level decisions um, to the board of adjustment and lower body or planning and zoning zoning board of adjustment appeals on to city council. So it does address both. Uh, we felt it was necessary uh, to provide a uh, clearer process uh, for consideration of appeals. You know, it's it's rare that you see those, but when we do, it is it can be a bit confusing sure. and it's cumbersome from a, you know, a code and resolution uh, perspective. It was actually historically, um, the appeals have been located in multiple sections or multiple chapters of city code. As well as a res- as well as a resolution, um, from our perspective, that's it's confusing, probably unnecessary, certainly unnecessary and confuser- confusing for for all users, including including ourselves at times. Um, so you took the first step, as you'll rec- recall. I think it was just May first uh, where you repealed um, a resolution that dates back, I believe, to two. 2000- Thousand. Um, so we removed that that resolution from the books, and the amendment that's before you today is kind of that next or la- last step to to clean things up. And so I'd like to just briefly walk you through those those highlights. The first thing you probably noticed in there that it includes was a, a repeal in its entirety of Chapter Ten, Section Ten Eight which eliminates appeal uh, provisions from be, being located in two separate uh, chapters. The next section, or all the remaining substantive changes, occur in Chapter 8. Uh, that includes Section 8.2 that you can see just a snap of here uh, that addresses appeals of administrative or zoning administrator decisions um, onto the Board of Adjustment. And then Section 8.5 in that same chapter uh, that addresses appeals of lower bodies or the Board of Adjustment uh, planning and zoning onto City Council. Uh, you saw probably reviewing the packet that both sections uh, establish grounds for which for which uh, an appeal may be filed. Uh, they both also include or uh, provide specific direction on that how the appeal will be handled, kind of before and leading up to the public meeting. Uh, both provide specifics on how the meeting itself will be handled, including uh, public com- or comment from the appellant testimony. And then finally, it codifies language uh, for council's actions or for action by council or of a board of adjustment that they might take when considering ultimately the appeal. Finally, there were a couple little cleanup items where we removed um, an incorrect reference, again, by striking cha- striking that section in chapter uh, 10, and then a cleanup of the, the t- section 8.5, no longer have uses referenced in code. We do have the conditional uses. Uh, so you can see the uh, appeals to city council lands there, and then we clarified in section 8.2, uh, zoning and administrator uh, decisions. 
Uh, so with all of those changes, we believe it provides a lot, lot better structure and certainty for, for all user, users, including ourselves. And with your blessing, uh, we'll proceed with the hearing before the Planning and Zoning Commission, and then ultimately uh, before bringing the final language to City Council. So that's, that's our recommendation or our ask today. Okay, the zoning administrator is just simply the staff person who reviewed it. Correct. Okay, it, it was kind of a term it's, out there that I was thinking. It's referenced in code, and I believe it, it about our designee, um, which is pretty pretty normal. Okay. So previous that was a community development director. It's been the planning manager that served that role since that time. Just hadn't seen the term. Maybe it's there someplace that I'd missed it. An administrator. Okay, I think any simplification of what is kind of an emotionally fraught process is a very good. I, I really appreciate that. And I, I can't be more positive about simplicity, clarity. Okay. Yeah. So I totally thought it was really well laid out, and clear, like here's the steps. Boop, 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 boop. Mm -hmm. And so I thought it worked really well. Yep. I always like simpler zoning things. So it, or, it, of course, it, hope we never have to use it. But yeah, it, it is very, it is very important. We will use it. Don't worry, guys. <laughs> I don't think that's a question. Yeah. Um, consent agenda. Can we do? It? I, I, we know. Uh, no, maybe this one ought to be in. I think from all six of us. I think all six is. of us. Yeah, and this that'd be fine. We can, we can put this on the regular agenda. That way, we can provide a report to the full council. We'll get just general direction. Again, this because it lives in the zoning code, it does have to go through the planning zoning commission. Yeah. They have to yeah. conduct a public hearing on it, make a recommendation to you, and you will actually conduct a public hearing on it as well eventually. But it is legislative, so the council can have a conversation, can provide staff feedback and direction, so that we can make sure that it goes through the process as smoothly as possible. Good lord. Okay. Yes. But I do think all six of us being mm -hmm. aware of, of I the think just being aware important. up front rather than coming across. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Cody. Okay, the next one. Idaho Public Television Tower Lease Agreement, Bill Belnoff. So as you may recall, at the last committee meeting, we had a lease agreement with Bennett Lumber, and this is related to, related to the city's emergency radio project where we uh, are in need to replace our antiquated uh, radio emergency radio system that we have lack some coverage in certain locations in town. Um, this agreement is a little different format because it is with another public entity. So it's between us and Idaho Public Television, uh, and the state that covers our use uh, to allow us to install radio equipment on the existing radio tower on Paradise Ridge, as well as install equipment within their shelter structure there. Um, so this will run through the duration of Idaho Public Television's current lease with the state of Idaho. Uh, so it does cover, I think, through uh, 2029. Uh, at that point, once they renegotiate their lease to the state, then we'll renew this at that point in time. Uh, compensation is, uh, I think we had about $600 per, $650 per year. Uh, that is substantially less than the Bennett lease. It was a little bit more than that, but uh, this is, I think, co-governmental entities working together on this particular site. So uh, staff would recommend approval of the lease, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Any questions? I don't have any. I think it's good. I don't have any either. It looks good to me. Yeah. I guess the only question I have, Bill, so that we talked about this last time, it's just going over the fine, because mm -hmm. we talked about Moscow Mountain. Moscow Mountain, now this is Paradise Ridge. Paradise Ridge, okay. Correct. Yeah. All right. Different entities, different agreements, different locations, but the same project. Okay. Okay. And we're just working to collect all the property rights. The The radio project is getting ready to go out to bid probably in the next 60 days. Yeah. We're just making sure that we have all of our site leases in hand to allow for the installation in Moscow Mountain. We've already had a lease, but we needed to amend that to add capacity for additional equipment. So we had additional compensation that came underneath that. Uh, we currently do not have any radio equipment on Paradise Ridge. So this is a new, new installation, mm -hmm. a new site. So but it will be a little bit cheaper too, right? You said like yes. less, yes. expensive. less expensive. Yeah, less expensive. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think if I recall correctly, the Bennett lease was a little over three thousand per year, where this is six fifty. Yeah, we like that. Yeah. Um, consent agenda. I'm good consent with agenda. Good. Thank you. Um, are there any other issues that anyone wants to raise here? I don't have any. Not from staff. Okay. Adjourn. 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 There we go.